In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take our second look at a tool in the audio editor found in PowerDirector 17 or 365 called the Dynamic Range Compression Tool. Again, it's in the audio editor of only those versions of PowerDirector. What we'd like to do is play this clip and then we'll show you a little bit in this second tutorial about two features of that. One is called attack and the other is called release. So let's assume that we would like the music to be a little more mellow, a little less distinct between the various sounds in the waveform. To do that, I'm going to highlight the audio clip, right click and choose the Edit Audio and choose Audio Editor. Again, I'm in PowerDirector 17 or 365. We see the waveforms in my audio editor and I'll enlarge them so you can see the difference. Let me describe a little bit about what attack and release are designed to do. You must have a very well-trained ear to hear the differences. And to be honest, mine isn't, so I can't hear much of what the differences are. You may be able to do more. The attack is the difference on the high parts, the time that it compresses the sound, how fast it clamps down on that sound. The release is how long it holds it at the lower level before it springs back to a higher level. I think of it as uh, someone who is perhaps uh, climbing a mountain. And this is how fast the downslope goes and then how long it is before it resumes its normal size. Now when we looked at dynamic range compression before, we noticed that in PowerDirector, in the audio editor, we have three different related tools, all with the same components, the same sliders. We have a limiter threshold, which deals with high range sounds, compressor with mid range, and then we have the gate or expander, which instead of minimizing the difference between the sounds actually makes them more noticeable. We're going to deal just with a compressor here. So you have to choose a decibel level as we showed in our earlier tutorial. And if you look, we have infinity at the midpoint of our audio file. And then as you go in either direction, the number gets smaller. So let's try something maybe, oh, in the low 20s. And the ratio is the aggressiveness of the compression will sit, the, sit it to about the middle range. And then we get to this attack. Notice it's in milliseconds. We can go down to the very left side where we have zero attack, no milliseconds, or we can go up to 500 milliseconds. Now that's how in time, how long it takes for it to clamp down. If I move to the left, it's faster. We'll leave it over here and then release is how long before it gets back to normal. Let's make that maximum number near the maximum end and see what happens. I can click on apply and you notice a huge change here in the audio. If I play this now, it's not nearly as crisp as it was before. I'll close it down and not save it. So we'll get back into the tool again. Edit audio, audio editor, dynamic range compression. And let's set it about where it was before. This time we're going to make the attack longer, more gradual, and the release, we'll make the release faster. We'll leave it toward the left side of the scale. Click on apply. Again, you notice it changed it, but in a different way. So in this case, the, the peaks are taller and the valleys, if I may call them that, are more uniform. If we play this, you notice the truncation here and in several of these at the range that we specified. So these are different ways in which you can fine tune audio files, WAV files, using the attack and release features 
in the audio editor and power director version 17 or 365. If you have an ear to hear the difference, this tool is a useful way to tweak the sound to the max.